Now, the sacrifice that Paul talks about is, is to be a total sacrifice, and it is a reasonable sacrifice. That's what he says. Now, we know it's to be a total sacrifice because the word sacrifice itself carries with it the idea of total, right? I mean, when Paul writes this letter and he says to present yourself to God as a living sacrifice, you were, use the word sacrifice, everybody in, in Paul's day would have immediately gone to the Old Testament system of the sacrificial system where an animal is killed. That's total sacrifice. The animal doesn't live. It is killed. It is brought to the altar, laid on the altar, and gives its life. And so when Paul says that I'm asking you to give your life as a living sacrifice, it is a total commitment of our life to him. And it's interesting, he says you are to present. He, he, he doesn't say, uh, the word present carries with it the idea of willfully giving my life. I'm not forced to, I'm not compelled to. But based on what God's done for me, when I confront the reality of his grace, when I confront the reality of his mercy, when I confront the reality of his love, when I know that God doesn't give me what I deserve, which is separation from him eternally in hell because I'm a sinner, and chooses instead to give me eternal life through grace, forgiveness of my sin, and heaven. When I realize what he has done for me, it demands from me a response. And the response is that I give him myself. I present my body willingly. It, it carries the idea of crawling up on top of that altar and presenting myself to God to say, here I am. Lord, I give myself to you. Now, when Paul says that we are to present our bodies, he's not talking about the physical body. He's talking literally about every part of our life, that we are to give God our life, our hope, our dreams, our plans, our aspirations. Everything about my life becomes his as a result of what he's done for me.